Perfect. What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas Dobaziola, whatever you want to call me. This is my co-host, Marty O'Neill. the fuck is up, folks? What's up? Special starting it off. episode today, folks. Starting it off. Let's All go. right, let's go. Guys, we've been talking about this in season one. It's finally here. This is the Benny the Butcher episode. Thank you for being ah, here. The Butcher coming, man. What's up with you? Thank you, man. And uh, we're just going to start it up. This is cereal milk. Go ahead and oh, light that one up. shit. <laughs> cereal milk. Let's go. Look at this shit let's right here. You got a lighter right next to you, too. I do. And I do. You got a uh, at the Astro out there, bro? All right, y'all could if y'all could see this shit at home. Look at this motherfucker. Little Man. little three point fives. Oh, that's I, what this is. Yeah, they're like well, about four grams ish. Make sure I got my inhaler in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hold on, now, does the inhaler intentionally match the outfit, or is that a coincidence that the shut off? That's clothes? a coincidence. Okay. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, before we start, I know we got notes and shit. The Pink Floyd shirt. Sick. Mm. Well, what's up, dude? You do? Are you a Pink Floyd fan? You know what? I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not a. I'm, I'm not a. I'm not into the. The Pink Floyd, but people may think I am from the shirt, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely into this type of fashion shit. Got you, got uh, what you. These, what these guys did with, with these shirts, it's the same thing we're trying to recreate now as artists, and you can see everybody copying them right now, so definitely had to rock it here. You know what's crazy is? It's $500 shirt. I'm pretty is sure. It? Yes, I'm pretty sure it was a $500 when Pink Floyd put these bitches mm. out. No, no, they're like six bucks. I got bucks. this from Max Fields. <laughs> Wait, it's like a, what's brand? Is this just a Pink Floyd shirt for 500 Yes. Why? <laughs> How you know are they wild? doing that? I have no idea. And back when they were on tour in the 70s and 80s, all those shirts were coming out of New Buffalo Shirt Factory. His what? cousins, yeah. the ones that the family owns it. invented they doing, fucking They were doing the uh, Super Bowl. They were doing the Jordan Pippen oh, shirts. Crazy. They were doing Garth Brooks, Pink Floyd, all that shit. Oh, that's crazy. You know, uh, Ad Pro in Buffalo, they do a lot of, uh, they do a lot of uh, NFL jerseys because it's Terry Pagula. And mm -hmm. He owns the company. He owns mm -hmm. the bill. So they do NFL jerseys. They do hockey jerseys. Damn. NHL. They do NBA jerseys. A lot of shit get made right in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Not to mention motherfucking New Era headquarters right downtown. Is it? Yep. yep. New Era headquarters in Buffalo, New York wow. downtown. Right? That's why you got all these fucking fitness, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> no, this for I, real. I, I never met nobody yeah, that changes their hats right. all the time. For like real. I went in there to the shop the other day. I went in there and I just got my hats and then they just bagged my hats up and I'm like, I didn't pay. And they's like, man, you good? They just, they just, you know what I'm saying? They just feel it. Right. Right. In your own city, that shit's hard. All Buffalo knowledge and history I know because of this dude right here. This whole show is about- It's all obscure, it's the only way. I mean, right. I only know about shit because from Buffalo because of you. And about four years ago, my homie put me on. He's like, you check out Griselda, I'm from New York, they're from New York, I'm like, all right, cool. Brought it up to Marty, he goes, stop what you're doing. That was uh, season one, bro. Oh, that's dope. You've been on that soundboard since season fucking one. It's a trip. Yeah, we got the whole Griselda mix on here for it's all different kinds of reactions and- <laughs> I'm not yeah. different no situations and I shit. I think you pulled one on Dr. Drew too. <laughs> a little trouble. Yeah, we get people tripping balls on fucking shrooms in here and shit. So yeah, that's with fire. the soundboard. But that's fire. But thank you for being here, man. I really appreciate. It. I know you're busy. And you're, you're going back home tomorrow. Uh, I might stay an extra couple days. Oh, okay. I'm out here having fun. I'm working, getting shit done. So I love it, man. You're shit. about to embark on a world tour, correct? Uh, I, I just came off one. I'm booking dates right now, and they might add some world, or they might add some uh, some dates in Europe in there. But I'm yeah. definitely putting together. Oh, it's this chair. Oh I'm shit, my bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm definitely putting together some uh, some tour dates. But yo, I went when I did go overseas. That shit was the craziest shit fucking ever. Like you know what? what I mean? like, in what way? It to well to me. This is like one of the things that I notice when I do a show. I'm like, when I say Benny, y'all say the butcher. I'm like, Benny, they're like, the butcher, uh -oh. Benny, the butcher. <laughs> it's like, is that they're so in tune. And in that moment, I realized like, they don't even speak this English. They don't even speak what I fucking speak. And they just hear just rocking out. And I had a like, just a whole bunch of dope experiences out there, man. I love it. The fans, man, they just, it's just, it's just more in tune. The fans is more in tune. Maybe because they don't get a chance to see motherfuckers like that I all the time. I think so. So I think yeah. it has to be why, because you can't miss the show. If you hear, if you're in Buffalo, you're mm -hmm. all Benny's playing. Like, fuck, I'm working. I'll, I'll catch the next one. Mm -hmm. But you're in Copenhagen. Like, you got to I quit. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? right. 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 We've had a lot of artists tell us that Europe is way more, uh, not supportive, but like you said, more in tune. Yeah, 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 more too, more too. Um, but I know you got Marty brought it up this morning. You got a new project coming out, a new thing you just kind of tease. tease yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everybody can't go, man. Everybody can't go, man. That's the new album. I'm saying, shout out Rock Nation, shout out Dev Jam, uh, shout out the Black Soprano family, shout out Griselda. It's just that 
you know, I'm at this point that everybody can't fucking go. Mm-hmm. And I had to name the album after that. But yeah, I was shooting a video yesterday. I was on a fucking crane to lift yeah. shit. You I know saw what the, the scissor lift thing. <laughs> right, right, right. At first, I'm like, what the fuck is this fool doing? Like, what am I doing, right? <laughs> yeah. You dropped yeah. such a mass amount of music. How long has this project been in the works for? I would say since I signed the Dev Jam album, maybe a year. But uh, it don't take me a year to make a project. It takes me a year to, mm-hmm. to get comfortable to want to release a project. I could drop projects every fucking month if month I want to. I got like 200 unreleased songs. Jesus. Some from some that I recorded last week and some shit that I recorded three, three years ago. Mm-hmm. But it's just that the fans, when I, when I put a project out, I started my career like this. When I dropped uh, Tanner Talk 3, that was my intro album uh, as a Griselda artist. When I dropped that shit, I moved to I moved to uh, Atlanta to work on it with Wes in February. It was done by March. I had an April oh, shit. right. I had an April release release date Man. for it, but things start picking up so fast. We just slowed down and started working on different shit. And it was eighteen months from when I first started working on it to to when I released it, when it was actually ready, like in two months. But when you make people not make people, but when the people are starving for the project, when they want it. Cause a lot of dudes put music out, but nobody's looking for the music you're putting out. Mm-hmm. Nobody nobody true. asks for that album. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody asks for that shit. So putting out albums when fans are asking for them and supporters are asking for them, that's a totally different thing. They ready for the shit. The best problem to have. Right, right, right. Yeah, cause you see artists with huge backing on giant labels mm-hmm. selling four, 40 tickets. No right, one right, showing right. up to their fucking show. It's a, it's a, right. like we said before, you can have a million followers and not pack a basement. Real shit, real shit. It's scary to look at, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Like it's kind of a facade. Like, mm-hmm. who's real out here? Yeah. And because, then, I don't mean to cut you off, but you got different type of fans, right? Some fans, all they will do is troll for you. 100%. All they, all they going to do is say, under my, if I put up a post and say, like, yo, niggas can't fuck with me, I'm really like that. They might tag with you. Well, this artist doing that, but that's all that artist is going. That's all that fan is going to do for you. This fucker not going to buy a ticket, not going to yeah. buy a hat, not yeah, going to yeah. buy a shirt. <laughs> they just going to troll and tag your name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah. not even. They going to stream the music. They not even going to fucking buy it off uh, Apple. They not even going to buy it off Title. They're not going to do none of that shit. So mm-hmm. it's just like you got to be careful. It's tricky. You know what I'm saying? Don't, yeah. don't let these people. Don't let these fans like big your mm-hmm. fucking head up to yeah. like you. know what I'm saying like yeah. you fucking Michael Jackson the fucking. Jacques Cousteau somebody. Damn, Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> did, did you notice your fan base change uh, when you signed the deal? Because to me, you always had such like a diehard, like mm-hmm. cult following mm-hmm. core fan base before the deal. Mm-hmm. Was it like, all you felt the difference from all these new people coming around in terms of your fan base and your pages and shit? Honestly, honestly, yes and no. Yes, because I see the new, the new, uh, the new fanfare and the new, you know, followers, whatever. But I don't call them people fans. You know, they just spectators. They just watch. You know, this guy signed a Dev Jam. Oh, he's a rapper. Gotcha. They don't even know who the fuck I am. Spectators, are good. Yeah, they just spectators. You know what I'm saying? So, the fans, the number one fans, are still there. The spectators, some of them, I'm gonna convert to fans. You know what I'm saying? There's other people. Mm-hmm. Who, it's people right now who never fucking heard of me who want to hear that album, and I'm gonna convert them to fans. So, you know, man, this game fucking tricky. But I tell mm-hmm. people, man, a lot of times, you gotta throw. You got to throw your best punch first, meaning you, you might not knock the motherfucker out. If you're a boxer, you might not knock him out with your hardest punch. You probably woke him up two rounds ago with that punch and broke him down. Mm-hmm. So it might take a little lighter punch to put him down. So it's like when you get in this game, a lot of, a lot of you got to shoot your shit off early, your best shit off early. Me, I'm far from done. I'm far from shooting my best shit off. And I'm saying I got at least, if you ask me, I got 10 more years in this shit at least. But it's like, you can't be holding on to no shit. No, say my best for last type now. shit. What? You can't say this your was, best you're for describing, last. Did you see the Stylebender fight last week? Mm-hmm. I seen that. I seen you're that. describing that fight <laughs> with oh. this whole mentality. Yeah, you're right. Throw your for best real. fucking punch first. Throw that best punch first, man. But oh, at, at what level were you at before the deal, after the deal, where you realized, like, damn, I'm one of the elite rappers alive, Jada Kiss, Pusha, put me on a track with anybody, I'm up there. Mm-hmm. I, well... Let me say this, let me, to, answer, to answer your question, let me answer that in a second, but I would just watch, somebody sent me this. Uh, <laughs> Miss Diddy sent me this, actually. She was like, yo, that's crazy. Fucking Big Daddy Kane was on a Drink Champs interview saying, like, yo, J. Cole, he, he's, he's that guy. He said, I love Benny the Butcher. Oh, he's shit. like, I love Conway and I love Benny the Butcher, but Cole is that guy. And it's like, damn, me, I'm still humble. <clears throat> 
So it's like, damn. I ain't even know who the Kane knew who the fuck I was. Exactly. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, and him when when he was doing his shit, he was considered that guy. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, and he's comparing me to those guys. Mm -hmm. Conway is that guy. Yeah. For sure. Uh, J Cole is definitely that guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like to be compared with those guys. That let me know that I'm a top lyricist when it comes from top guys who yeah. are top lyricists. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not when it comes from you know like Ralph who sit on the couch and shit. Not saying that his opinion doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter as much as fucking Big Daddy Kane's. But uh, when as an artist, when you you know you rising and shit, and the game is when your career and your lifestyle affects other people's lifestyle. When when my mom is start getting free shit, and my daughters tell it, my daughters telling me about their experiences. Like you know, this shit just don't only affect me. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying. This is like people who people who never who I never even posted with. You know, they they got the little uh, they got the little magnitude of fame. I'm saying that, that shit just dope. So that's when I knew. Before the deal, I knew. Just running around being, having a connection with Eminem. You gotta remind you, we came in a game like that. Yeah. That's fucking, you know what I'm saying? To that's, me, that was kind of out of nowhere. Like, like <laughs> To me too, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's when it seemed like, after that happened, then it's like, okay, now it's features with Wu-Tang. Now, like, now legends are starting to really, like, pay their right, respects. Right. And you guys had organically grown it. It wasn't some overnight shit. So it they were wasn't. like, yeah, of course. Let them in. They belong let here. Let them in. Let them in. Let them in. You know what I mean? And that's when I knew, like, being around M and and, and kicking it with Hove, and you know, when, when when you when you get coached, when you get coached by the by the old players, it's like I'm pretty sure when you see Bron walking off the court and then he's stopping and he's kicking it with Bill Russell, yeah, the dream. I'm pretty sure to him that gotta feel like, damn, that was the dream right there. Yep. That's the reason why we do this shit. Yeah. We wouldn't have thought about doing this shit if it mm -hmm. wasn't for these guys. And you had those moments with Jay-Z, Eminem, where they're sitting down, dropping knowledge on you and shit. Definitely Hove, Raekwon, mm. uh, Kiss, everybody from the locks. Royce, of course, Emery, he not a rapper, but E. Yeah. Uh, man, it's, um, it's crazy that I'm not thinking of these guys right now because he wrote this big ass blunt for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's so but, many, <laughs> right? yeah. But there's so many dudes and Lil Wayne, and I was just thinking about this the other day, is that those guys get it, you feel me? To understand that outside of the money, outside of the, 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 the women, and outside of the fucking fame, outside of the material things, they understand that my position is to somewhat, to somewhat guide the next generation in the right direction. Mm. Even if that comes with encouragement. You know how far that go? If, if, if one of the greats tell you good job, man, that go, yep. go a long way, man. Mm -hmm. Come on, and, man. And, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the guys I named know that. Yeah. J. Cole, too. He been in this game for a long time, you know what I'm saying? That's my homie, too. We kick it all the time, so mm -hmm. Cole, too. Uh, man, there's a whole bunch of dudes I'm yeah. not naming. It's guys who are not rappers, man. Uh, shout out Mac Main. You know what I'm saying? I take game from anybody, man. Yeah. I need some Our generation grew up on the wisdom of these rappers. On exactly. those Jadakiss bars. We, if you didn't have mm -hmm. people teaching you this shit, you learned integrity and how to move, how to boss, how to be a boss. Like, all exactly. that shit. That's that taught what, us everything. That's what your music is for, I know, for me, for that whole next generation. That's what we hope our podcast is. Yeah, man, that's the whole point. The it's free fucking game. Free yeah. fucking game. Real all shit. the time. Because why wouldn't you? You got to be a hater motherfucker to not You got to be a hater. Listen, it, it's people... Who I've met along my travels, who particularly don't you know, fit my character, but I can see that they're winning. So I'm like, this guy got something to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me see. He knows yeah. something that I don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. It's not about if we if if I like how he dressed or if I like his if he vegan or not or you know what I mean? if he black fucking white green blue or purple. It don't matter that. It's like, man, this this fucking guy know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And you would be a hater, motherfucker, or a fool just, just to not want to kick it and get free game. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? I think that's the most valuable thing in the world. Growing up with the old, my grandpa, my like the older, I don't know about you, but did you grow up 12? You hang out with all the 16 year olds and shit? Was that, you, was that you growing up? Yeah. That's how I felt like I learned so much. What's like Gunner Machine Gun Black? Machine Gun Black is my brother. West Side Gunner is my older cousin. I'm not those guys' age. They're a few years older than me. Oh, they are. I was, uh, I was the kid when they was running outside to go play. My mom or West mom would tell him, like, yeah, take him too. Oh, you little <laughs> cousin <laughs> Right, shit. right. I'm not old enough to do this shit. They about to be jumping off trees, pl playing tackle football, mm -hmm. or maybe with some girls in the neighborhood. I'm not even old enough for that shit yet. Yeah. But I'm learning by default. So that saved my life. Just, just talking about getting game and shit, 
like a West Side Gun. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at him in the game. Look what he's doing. Curating. Curating from fashion to music to art, movies. Nobody ever liked him before. The, I don't right, want to spoil right. it, but you guys' this movie you guys did, uh -huh. I'm going to say... My favorite thing ever is I won't, I don't want to spoil it, but after it's like yo let me get some, let me buy that. And that way I called this motherfucker immediately. Like that's how you do it. You mm -hmm. end it like let me buy yep, a fifty yep, yep. cent. Like, no real shit. That was that was cold. That was it cold was blooded. the hardest shit you that could do. That was cold blooded. You know what I'm saying I was going crazy watching that fucking movie this in my house with my no, wife in Orange County and shit watching conflicted. <laughs> he walked out in the Paris. That shit was fucking crazy. Yo, you I, see me? I was in the peas. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Shit's crazy, dude. Yep. And and that was all independent. And that's why you guys are doing it. Okay, look, remember remember underground? Like, Mac Dre was underground right, before right. social media. He's mm -hmm. underground. Mm -hmm. I, if he, Three more years, he would have been at the independent major. Because mm -hmm. I feel like you guys are not mm -hmm. underground. Mm -hmm. you, you don't got to, like, you don't you know who Benny the Butcher is? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those, oh, you got you to gotta hear this. It's from mm -hmm. common knowledge. Yeah, it's, right. it's common knowledge. Yeah. But you guys aren't pushed on MTV. And you right, know what I mean? Exactly. That's exactly. the thing. It's a... That's how you, I think that's how people solidify themselves in music mm -hmm. is the real hardcore heads that are listening are going to go, no, 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 fuck that commercial ass shit. Listen to this phone. Give me a year. Exactly. I guarantee you. Exactly. Exactly. That's, mm -hmm. this how, that's just how it works. And I think mm -hmm. that's why other artists, like you said, like the older dudes are looking at you like, no, no, that's definitely going to be soon. Right. And they and, know. And it feels good when you do it. And a year later comes and you, and you, this is, this is, this is why, this is why my fans and supporters love me. Cause Cause I came up like that, word of mouth. Everybody I meet, everybody who listens, man. Let me just thank all the fans and everybody who fuck with Benny the Butcher. Cause y'all always tell me like, yo, I'm telling everybody about you. I tell exactly. everybody about you, and I help their argument when they tell you, yo, watch in about a year. Like that year come, and I did what they say I was mm -hmm. gonna do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm gonna keep fighting for y'all. So mm -hmm. keep telling people, man. Good shit. Yeah, yeah no, he was he. Like I told him when I when I brought it up, Mike Griselda. He goes, oh, hold on. They're from Buffalo. And then he just sat me down and he tired talk. And then that's when we started the podcast, yeah, damn near. Not real shit. Yeah. Can I tell you the first time I ever heard about you? What's that? So I was playing basketball at Damon. Mm -hmm. So I'm on, I'm on that. I was up there with Don Juan Tyson, Juan Stroud, Jamie Richardson, oh, yeah. so that make, class. Make sure y'all listen to this story right here. <laughs> right. It was legendary basketball. I didn't realize when I went to Damon, oh, this is like the best hoopers in the town are mm -hmm. up here for the summer league and shit. Right. So I played a season at Damon and then I went to Madai. I'm like, all right, I'm not getting any playing time. I'm gonna go down to Madai and mm -hmm. dominate, basically. <laughs> I went down to Madai, did spring training camp, run around Delaware Park, medicine ball, all this crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Got caught up smoking weed and shit, <laughs> fucked it off, basically got kicked off the team. Damn. But in that same moment, I had found music. Mm -hmm. Like, I had switched obsessions into music. I started rapping my fucking ass off. Mm -hmm. As soon as I did, I got up at Deep Thinker Records. I don't know if you remember that. Of course I do. Up in Black Rock. Of course I do. Right up where I was, that's where I was born, Grant Amherst and shit, mm -hmm. right up there. So I got an internship up in uh, Deep Thinker Records and I was in there working on the computer and shit and the dude next to me is like, Tana Talk. This motherfucker's <laughs> calling this shit Tana Talk. <laughs> and I thought it was like Scarface Tana. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize. <clears throat> then come to find out, oh, no, 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 completely different fucking thing. And then I looked into it. And then I, because I had an adopted brother and he was from Wyoming and shit over there. Mm -hmm. And like I had, I hadn't like, I didn't grow up over there, but I was right, right, right. So it was just from that point on, I've been fucking following. Right, that's dope. That's dope. <laughs> Tana talk in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? That's oh four, oh five. So I'm imagining right, right, that's right. number one, right? Right, yeah, that's number. That's actually that's number two. No, that's oh four five. That's fucking number one. Yeah. See, he's not talking about two. He's not talking about three. That's why I said make sure y'all listen to the story. <laughs> A Buffalo native. No, I've been doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Heavy. And the point, the real underlying point of that is, you know, people would look at you and be like, yeah, he blew up when Eminem came around. Or like, he, mm -mm. That, like that's mm -mm. when it started. Mm -mm. The shit, we're talking about 20 years ago, that shit kicked mm -hmm. off. When God knows, that's when you put out your first shit. Right, right. I tell everybody, when I put out Tanner Talk 1, took over the city. No, I took over my block. When I put out Tanner Talk 2, took over the city. Mm. I'm saying, put out Tanner Talk 3, I took over like the underground shit, Griselda, Empire. Put out Tanner Talk 4, got a gold record. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's steps. So you know Tana <laughs> Talk 5 is going to be crazy. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Taking a moment to talk about one of our sponsors, and this is my bookie. For all you sports bettors out there, for all you fans, all you college football and NFL football fans, get ready. My bookie is offering a huge deal for all of our fans here at Dope As Usual Podcast. No matter where you're watching, click the link in the description, the my bookie link. Check out, use our code Dope As Usual. If you spend $50, you get an automatic $200 free dollars. Bonus cash. Yes, 
$50 gets you 200 free bonus cash. But you have to use our code dope as usual. Aaron Rodgers may be out. The season may be over, but your season has just begun. Same day parlays, daily odds and boosts. This whole season with my bookie, take advantage right now. You got 50 bucks and you like betting and you like football, get 200 free extra dollars instantly. The second you bet your first 50, you get it credited right to your account. Use our code dope as usual. Bet 50 bucks, get 200 free. Go bet on the games this weekend, guys. If you're gonna bet, bet with my bookie. You can do any sport, but right now it's NFL season, guys. It just started. We got football for another four months. $50 gets you 200 free automatically credited to your account. Thank you so much for supporting the brands that support us. Back to the episode. Hey, what's up, guys? Taking a moment to talk about one of our sponsors, and this is HelloFresh. For everyone out there that is on the go, whether you have kids, whether you have multiple businesses, or you're just super busy, or you're a procrastinator, that's me. I'll go grocery shopping and go, hey, man, I got stuff to do. Let me start cooking now, and I'll forget. I'll take too long, and then I order out. HelloFresh has eliminated that problem from everyone's life. Right now, you can get pre-cut, pre-portioned ingredients, recipes. All the thinking that goes into the hard part of cooking is done. Everything comes pre-cut. The recipe's ready to go. Your meals are prepped. All you do is cook it. So right now, if you want to take control of your eating habits, and you want to get on a routine, join HelloFresh. And if you're watching this and you want to take advantage of this, get 50%, yes, 5-0. Use our code HelloFresh.com. Use our code 50YOLA. Yes, 5-0-Y-O-L-A. Use that code at checkout and you will get 50% off your first order. And then for the next two months of you reading up, you can get 15% off of the next two months. There's no grocery shopping. It cuts off the price of eating out. HelloFresh is saving you money, time, and headache. Expedite dinner with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Thank you for supporting the brand brands that support us back to the episode we saw now you just kind of like at a show i saw a clip of a new track with you and Lil wayne uh-huh and uh, we saw a little bts shot of you with the fucking video that shit was mm-hmm. from new orleans the buffalo i went crazy right, when right, i heard right, that right, shit. Right, right. what was that like man that's, that's that's dope to get the uh to get to have records like that get to play them for the city but they're definitely unreleased big dog man me and wayne me and toon <sighs> going crazy you know i like this crazy i like to fuck with all of the greats that's mandatory that i do that each album i I got a great lyricist on there Mm -hmm. how often are you guys actually in the studio together or is it all just email back and forth and shit it's just all email and shit i'm a buffalo nigga i'm in atlanta running around tune out here somewhere all all over yeah i'm saying but i can just imagine you know a nigga like him i would have to say i'm just imagining I feel like he recorded a lot of that shit by himself. For sure. Mm-hmm. He had to. Yeah. All On the tour bus and shit. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I heard too. Mm-hmm. That's what, when I got my verse back, that's what they say. Like, yo, he's on tour so he can do it. A lot of times they'd be like, I'm on tour, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know like, he's yo, got it in his bus. Exactly what they yeah. said. They're like, he's on tour now, so it's a good time. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, it's a good, oh he's got downtime. He got downtime. Gotcha. Because oh, he got the stu- he got the mm-hmm. in the bus, so yeah. it's a good time. How is it for you? Does the writing come in waves when you know you got a project, or is it always, or is it when you're on the tour bus, or like, is there? How does it, it comes work? in waves. It comes in waves. Like you said, 20 years ago, right? I've been doing this shit for so long, mm-hmm. and basically that made me a legend in the city, mm-hmm. putting that album out, mm-hmm. that Tana Talk One, because that was my first time curating. Uh, I recorded, I recorded a lot of those songs myself, like press and record. Like I press it, then I go in the booth and I rap it. That's how I did Tana Talk One. I had my own studio and everything, so it's like. I've been doing this shit for so long that mm-hmm. it has to come to me, that I can't yeah. chase it down. I gotta be like in a club, chilling, buying shit, shopping for two weeks, traveling, living my life. Then I might just walk out the club, motherfucking three in the morning, like I got it, mm-hmm. yeah. Eureka. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you gotta like, it's from experience, like no, I gotta do some more cool ass shit for a minute. Mm-hmm. I gotta go live I gotta, gotta do some I shit. To. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have to. Because if not, I, you're reaching and going like, what else have I done before? Mm-hmm. Not real I already shit. talked about that. Yeah. And I have to. And just some special shit to me talking about studios. I recorded all, all the studios in Buffalo. I see when you guys post up, a lot of the times that studios I used to record at, uh, I put my I put out a mixtape in 05 called Whatever It Takes, hosted mm-hmm. by Capone from Capone and Noriega. Oh, what? Went, printed up 5,000 copies, went down to the city, brought it back, did the same shit, went up to Doris Records, record theater. Oh, you really, know the play. Really got them all that's off. The, that's like, the Buffalo rollout right Yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> all that shit, consignment deals and shit. But I was in like a Deep Thinker, uh, Outer Limits. Mm-hmm. I ended up at, uh, I was recording with my man T-Man over on Hagen and shit in his closet for a long time. Damn, T-Man, who, 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 who was that? Anthony Huff, Soundlock, t Ferg, his little brother raps and oh, shit, A.K. Reed. Brother. Okay, okay. Yeah. Definitely know about Outer Limit. I've been, that's been a lot of uh, sleepless nights in Outer yeah. Limit. Ken, Ken smoking there. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> he wouldn't let Eminem smoke in there. That's, that's that was his big fucking, fucking thing. Dude, that's what he did. My, my boy was fucking breaking down the Dutch and shit. He's like, you know, I told Eminem you can't smoke in here. 
Get the and fuck he out of here. With yeah. shoes on this yeah, shit. right. right. <laughs> I love that someone else finally knows what Marty. I've been sitting here for three years listening to these stories, bro. I've never met anybody else from over there. I feel like I could walk that whole city and know where I'm at right? just based yep, on yep, this yep. fool right here. Real shit, man. That's dope, man. You gotta, you gotta bring yeah. him to the city, man. Yeah, I, don't I will. Know. I will. I was supposed to go to New York yesterday, but mm-hmm. I, I ended up coming here. But yeah, totally different right. from like the boroughs. Yeah. Totally. Oh, that's what he told me. He's. Mm-hmm. Well, we brought up Larry Lott, and I'm like, he's from Buffalo. He goes, well, you mean a different fucking country? Because he's like some, <laughs> the biggest jewel yeah, thief yeah. in history. We had him on the show, <laughs> and he has some fucking crazy stories. I bet bro. he do. Like, damn, he like the cat burglar type nigga? No, he's the fool that busts into your he's fucking like GTA diamond heist store. Burglar. GTA heist comes in, takes it all. <laughs> biggest jewel thief in American damn. history, bro. Anyway, he talks about, I brought up. New York, he's like, it's not the mm-hmm. same country. Buffalo mm-hmm. is different. Yeah. That's what I hear. Well, when Young Jeezy mm-hmm. came up here, he was like, oh, shit, Buffalo. Like, Thanks, sir. First thing he said was, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you know those towns like that is nothing to fucking do there. Yeah. That crazy. Buffalo has two million people in it not that long ago. Mm-hmm. Two million? Yeah, it's probably at like 150K now. Why, why, hold on, how, what the fuck happened? No, it's, it's, it's almost a quarter, it's still like almost a quarter, quarter million people right. there. How many people, why did people leave? What the fuck? Uh, well, a lot of people came to Buffalo. A lot of people came to Buffalo for the steel industry. Mm-hmm. That's shut down. Uh, and, and for uh, when the steel industry came out, it was uh, like project housing. You know, those started off as like good homes. They didn't start off the projects didn't start off being the fucking projects. You know what I'm saying it was yeah. it was nice at a point. Oh shit! Exactly, yeah. it was nice at a point. For real, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And any project in America, you know what I'm saying, it start off as affordable home for for lower income based people. So, You're right. I lived in that shit too, and now it's ghetto as fuck. Where yeah, it's it's ghetto as fuck. You're right. Right, right. Damn, it was even, nice. Even even where I stayed in the projects, it, it was ghetto then, but it's more ghetto now. But uh, so a lot of people came up there for jobs for the steel industry and uh, the Erie Canal. In 1920, Buffalo. This is like a hundred. This is less than a hundred years. Ago. This is a hundred years ago. Hundred, maybe hundred and three years ago. Mm-hmm. In 1920, Buffalo uh, spawned the most millionaires. In the country, the most millionaires was made in Buffalo. It's right on the Rust Belt uh, with Detroit, Cleveland, uh, you know, just all of them being close to Canada. You know what I'm saying so. It was a spot, but you know, technology. You know, what I'm saying go, goes forward, and you know, you got you got places like fucking Silicon Valley. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying. Now, when he says the steel, in, like I'm from Lackawanna, so like okay, right, the houses right, right. in Lackawanna were covered in fucking soot. From the steel From plant. the steel spot. Uh, and the shit okay. is like, I always describe it as fucking haunted. Like, stay right, out. Right, right. Because the shit is nuclear waste. buildings are still there. You yeah. right past when all the old factories and shit, they're still there. Yeah. Because Buffalo seems like a small town the way you guys talk about it, mm-hmm. but 250 is not that small. It's the man. second biggest city in New York. To right. New York For City. Real? Yeah. Bro, I don't know nothing about geography. <laughs> yeah. and shit. I'm lost. It is. Here. It is. I never traveled anywhere that we was illegal because they used to sell hella packs when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to bring we where I'm going. And I. I I'm sure you've done trips and shit. Like, mm-hmm. the, the dumbest thing, the worst thing in the world is knowing you're going to jail and you could have prevented the shit. That's the worst shit. It's the right. worst thing it's in the, the fucking world. It's the shoulda, coulda, woulda. It is. As it's happening, you see the lights, you're like, can I just rewind? Just give me one fucking chance to rewind. I would have left this shit at home. I left this shit. Oh, at home. fuck. But hey, I'm, yo, uh, people from California and uh, Miami and New York City and... A lot of cities in Texas too. It's like life is kind of different, like from you guys, because it's like other shit going on in the middle of America that y'all never, never could get about. used to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That y'all never could fucking yeah. get used to. And it's really like, like large cities in America. It's only like twenty of them. The rest of the cities, the other couple hundred cities, is like middle America, Buffalo. I never traveled. Before, you know what I'm so saying? Uh, so some city like Milwaukee. Uh, yeah. motherfucking, you know, just a regular city. And it's real easy when you're in one of those cities for it to seem like it's like the center of the universe. That's what I remember thinking. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, people small think town this syndrome, petty shit bro. fucking matters so much. Yo, that's another thing about the small towns. You're right. People, people, it's nothing to do there. But the Drugs sh- and have kids. Exactly. That's it. But the shit that you do, but the shit that does go on there, they confuse that with shit to do. Like it might be a... <laughs> Right. Damn, that should be the fucking slogan of my town, bro. <laughs> Real shit. It might be, it might be a bullshit ass nightclub everybody go to, uh-huh. and they might think that's the shit. To, it's nothing to do, so this yeah. is the shit to do. But it's really, true. if you was in a town where it was shit to do, you wouldn't even think about that shit. You feel perspective the craziest yeah. shit. So no, it I is. Mean, when I moved out, I'm from a small ass town in the middle of California. It's mm-hmm. 
just drugs, gangs, and then agriculture. That's the whole town, right? Mm -hmm. So when I came here, I realized like, dude, this shit, you can make a lot of money when you leave home. Real shit. You can make a lot of money when you mm -hmm. expand. Because mm -hmm. I was nervous to move out here, trip on my fucking rent for my little ass house over there. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when you almost challenge yourself to like, all right, I got to put up 250, I only got 210. All right, I'm going to go get it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't care, it would have took you six months to maybe get that other four. No, real shit. People, right? They, they, they have anything worth having, you got to work. You got to work hard. I seen what kind of car you, I, I seen what kind of whip you got, right? And I can see your watch. You know what that tell me? Like I knew you was fucking fucked up, dead broke somewhere before. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. Anybody I met from from having this money and being having this lifestyle, everybody I met who's rich and shit, they got a fucked up backstory. Like yo, I slept mm. in my car. Mm. Like, oh yo, yeah, I had roaches and rats before. Like I learned that. That's damn near part of the story for people like us who come from where we come from. Niggas like us who was doing our mixtapes, doing our rap shit, crying and just you know whatever, trying to find our niche. That's part of the story. So I tell people, when, when artists come around me and they be broken, fucked up, but they be shy, I be like, no, come on, that's part of the story. That's mm. the first part. Come on, let's go. Like that. You, you, you doing right so far, you know what I mean? That's part of this shit. That's like the way you put, put that right, right there. there, yeah. That's TED Talk shit right there. Mm -hmm. True story though, because I feel like that's true. I just, when you said that, I just started thinking of every one of my close homies that's doing great. Every one of them slept in someone's house, broke as fuck. Real oh, shit. no, 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 it's like Sinead, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> right, like, I, I, I didn't know what it meant every time we were at the grocery store. My mom's like, we're, I'm unloading the stuff onto the belt. Mm -hmm. She's like, wait in the car for me. Every time, I didn't realize that she was like, I'm paying with food stamps and I'm kind of embarrassed. Can you please go outside? Right, I didn't exactly. know that shit until I was like 11 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when she just like let me stay one day. I'm like, that's why you always send me to the fucking that's car. That's why. My mom worked her fucking ass off mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she hated taking fucking help but right 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 i mean bro we're fucking poor <laughs> like, what are we shit. gonna do, man? What, are, what are we gonna do you know what i'm saying that's part of the story and man i love our i i love i love the moms man because because they sacrifice so much shit and for us to be at a point to help them you know what i'm saying you know that's that's their blessings and their prayers giving off you know what i'm saying so gotta love the mothers man was your mom supportive of music what? My mother damn near was the reason. Uh, no shit. My mother, she had called me downstairs and be like, your video on? Watch your video. Fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it, some of them was my video. Some of them was like, man, this your shit. Yeah. <laughs> you got me, call, you calling me down here to watch this shit, but my mom definitely encouraged me to get in this shit. My mom encouraged me to do everything. Mm -hmm. I sold drugs with my mother. Oh, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She encouraged me to do everything, but uh, hip hop was definitely first and one of them. And you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so, she always encouraged me. She she came overseas with me. You know what I mean? Real shit. So she come to the show. She come to the parties and shit. He's from your spot. We're actual fans. I even said the other day, like, I think Benny might have taken Jacket's spot for me. And I said it the other day, and mm -hmm. I'm a fucking hardcore fan of the Jacket. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my shit. Because yep. when it comes to gangster rap or like street rap, that's lyrical. Mm -hmm. It's real hard to, to, to find other names. It's, real, it's getting real fucking hard it's right get, now. It's getting real hard. It's getting hard to go, <laughs> who else? Mm -hmm. That's why me, I learned. I've been in a car ride and listening to old shit because it's mm -hmm. hard to find new shit. That's, that. mm -hmm. that, that's Marty's life right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of my questions I had was like, if you had the lifetime most listened to, mm -hmm. East, West, South rappers, what's that top three look, look like? Mm. Uh, East, Hove. Like which Hove? Uh, which Hove? I would have to say, I would have to say, Mm. In my lifetime, mm. volume three. I've been listening to volume three a lot. Volume three, he he had he had tasted the big success and and understood that it wasn't good. Mm. I'm saying I, how he started. He had a song "Come and Get Me." Yeah. You know what I'm saying so he was like, I mean he he was like fuck the magazines, fuck everybody at gotcha. that point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it wasn't it was all the way all the way on the come up, but he had came up, went four times platinum, and he was like, man, this shit ain't shit ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that whole West Coast, West Coast, the dog, man. Got to go to dog. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like even it's just the career span so long, the influence, you know what I mean? And the, you just been in the season. I've been, like I said, I've been listening to a lot of old shit. Listen to the Doggy Style album, man. You know what I mean? Just, mm -hmm. he was, he made you sing along with his lyrics. Mm. He was creative, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He was he was one of a kind when he hit. For sure. So the dog. And he went on Joe Rogan and said, 
told the world about Benny the Butcher and how he like it's helped the out the Def Jam <laughs> deal and all the <laughs> shit. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, shout out, yeah, shout out the dog, man. And and for the South, face Scarface, mm-hmm. Scarface. Got to go Scarface. It's a good three right there. Mm-hmm. That's a good three. Now, I got a whole a whole time I'm thinking of these names, I got a bunch of honorable mentions. Of course. Yeah, oh, yeah, and, and it's either I could have said one or the other, but those. That's why I don't say favorite. I say most listened to. Yep, yep, yep. Most listened to. You know, I got to go, mm-hmm. go listen back to all of the Scarface shit. Like I said, I've been listening to the uh, Snoop shit lately. And I always go to, always go to hold when I, when I wear out, when I wear out motherfucking Hard Knock Life, I'm on, I'm on uh, the Blueprint when I wear yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, on that same note, real quick, I uh, did my first marathon this year. Mm-hmm. My number one album while I was training for the marathon. I'm hoping you might sign this. Most listened to album. Oh, that's yeah, crazy. DJ Drama yeah. on. He signed it for me. Yeah. Oh, you got sure. drama scientists? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Dope. Oh, that's fire right there, man. I would love to sign this for you, my boy. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. That's under the whole like umbrella of all the Is projects, it? the hundreds of projects. That's got to be one of my all-time favorites. Man, appreciate you. I work hard on this, man, putting this together. I ain't gonna hold you. I gotta draw the crown. Sad. Sad. <laughs> I really gotta take a fucking penmanship class, bro. <laughs> Everybody that comes yeah. to the show makes me just. I need to learn better because my shit looks like shit. Nah, man, we, <laughs> man, this this album mean a lot to us, man. We put this together. Thank you. We signed Thank uh, you. Monarch. They were E1 at the time. The old Koch. Man, shout out Abe. <clears throat> shout out everybody over there, man. Uh, Twenty twenty three, middle of the pandemic. DJ Shea was alive. He basically produced that album. Wow. Was that the last project you guys worked on together? Mm-hmm. 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 And, uh, man, shit just dope. Can you speak on the role he's had in Buffalo music and just music in general? Because, uh, like, for me, even, he put me on the radio. He sat mm-hmm. with me, he smoked in the right, studio, right, right. talked. And DJ did. Shea is the Dr. Dre of Buffalo. Fuck. Mm. DJ Shea is... That's what he is. He he been doing this longer. He's older than us. So he been doing this long before all of us. Uh, he's he's wise and he's a talent magnet. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So he been doing this. He's a producer. He's a DJ. So it, it like I've been like after like I said I took over my block when I met when I dropped Tana Talk One. I met DJ Shea, then put out Tana Talk Two and took over mm. the city. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what he meant. That's that's what kind of person he was. Like he was Phil Jackson. Mm-hmm. And even before me, he worked with other artists. He worked with other top notch artists of the city. Uh, Griselda just took it further. You guys had your own. The Buff City shit was like the whole studio. That was its mm-hmm. own home mm-hmm. wave before even Griselda, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Buff City Records was like you know he know his shit. He from the city, like heavy in the city, like heavy, like <laughs> like the shit. Yeah, I, I mean, sat on Parkside. I sat in there with them. Like yeah, yeah. I bought Hayes from DJ Shea. You listen to my beats and shit. Yeah, like. yeah. And we, and we was the first niggas with like with the super good weed in the city. Everybody mm-hmm. came to the studio to get the weed. You know what I'm saying? Real he, shit. he told me how bad it is out there. So if you got good weed, you are yeah, fucking. Yeah, I was God, getting nickel God. bags. You ever been to Lackawanna, South Buffalo? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I'm the king of South Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. You know I wanted saying? to ask you. Mm-hmm. Picture up on Seneca. What's uh-huh. that mean? My chicken up, whipping up, dropping off and picking up, nigga. What? My picture still up on Seneca. Uh, my picture up on Seneca is mean that a painting of me was painted on the side of a gas station on Seneca of a store. An artist did it, man. I apologize for I don't remember the art, artist's name right now, but man, I made I made by the who? Ponce. He know because it's hanging up in the store. It's not hanging. It's not there no more. But it's hanging up in the shop. Right. Right. So, uh, but I used to trap on Seneca, basically. I'm mm-hmm. not, I can't make it, I can't make it cinematic. I used to trap yeah. on Seneca, made a lot of money on Seneca. Yeah. So my pitch is still up on Seneca. I'm just talking shit. Mm. A lot of times, that's why I say when I rap, I'm be talking to myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> shit that you know about. Right, right, Inside right. joke Inside to yourself. <laughs> right, Fuck right, it. Right. You, leave, you leave fans going, what did you mean by that shit? Yep, yep. And it sticks. 2289 Seneca, man, me, me, J-Rock, and India. That story from Fight of 50 when she, on that song where she said, well, I had to flush. That was on Seneca Street. No shit. That was on Seneca Street. So, you know what I mean? So, I know all about Seneca, man. Shout out to my South Buffalo niggas, Let's man. Let's go. South Buffalo trappers, man. When I first met my wife, she lived on Seneca in Princeton. Mm-hmm. Move her, had all my shit in a garbage bag, move right in. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, you the classic, the classic mm-hmm. fucking story, bro. <laughs> Real shit. I know I lived on Roanoke. 
Yeah. Off of Seneca. <laughs> no shit. Definitely. Get the fuck yeah, out of yeah, here. Yeah. I lived I lived on Roanoke off of Seneca. I lived on fucking I lived off of South Park. I lived on Freedro off of Clinton. Uh-huh. Uh where man, I lived on I lived on Gould. Mm-hmm. I lived on Marlowe. Oh Street, damn, so. you were really over there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Wow, okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> Marty's all hyped up. I would have never. <laughs> right, I'm right, I'm right in his backyard. Yeah. <laughs> nah, because we're. Oh, I'm always going. Tell me more about where you're from, uh-huh. Marty. And then he brings up a picture. Like, you tra- you fuck with snow. <laughs> That's why this fool can hit bogs like it ain't shit. <laughs> that cold weather all day. That cold weather in there. Right? Oh, he's got yeah. this fucking lungs of a dragon. Yo, Buffalo, a different place, man. Upstate New York is a different place. And the further I travel, and the more I travel, the more I realize that. Mm-hmm. And it's a place to be proud of. But man, it's a it's a it's a, it's a place where you don't get to see a lot. You know, you say you come from a small town, you don't get to fucking see a lot. Anything. So, I mean, you small town kids, y'all got to get out of y'all town, man. Mm-hmm. Make some money, meet some new people, try some new things, man. That's so important in what we do. Yeah, when you say snow, it's different. Like literally, we had like fifty people die last year in the snow. Yeah. Like it was like an actual tragic, horrible situation. Snow, that's just scary as different. hell. He told yeah. me uh, your your doors get stuck open. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Drive. I'm gonna live by the beach. Fuck drive, that. Dude. Tell him about driving with the doors frozen open. Yeah, definitely. definitely <laughs> Shit man. like that. Yeah. Uh, just in this, just in this blizzard we just had, when, when people died, uh, when we was we was riding in that shit outside. You know what I'm saying I was taking people groceries, giving people rides home. Oh shit! Hell yeah! Had my mask on. Some people ain't even know it was me. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> fucking tight. Like on some Batman shit. I'm not gonna lie. Why not? Yeah, man, I'm riding there. I got the I got the pool shiesty on. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying we riding in the big wagon there, and we just gave a few people rides. Uh, Help a few people get groceries and all type of shit. And people on South Park, they don't even know it's me. Literally dying. It's Batman freezing and <laughs> like dying said, in the snow. Some like, Bruce Wayne shit. It doesn't sound like crazy, but literally saving lives. It was so bad. People were dying mm-hmm. in the street. Yeah, the this shit. young this young girl died. I saw that yeah, man. And the I video. helped donate money to get her get her body back to her family because she wasn't oh. from Buffalo. She was going to school in Buffalo. You feel what I'm Damn. saying? So I could just imagine things like that happen. People locked in the house. My man, he in prison doing 11 years. I'm calling, checking on his mother, get, taking her food and shit. <sighs> I'm saying, stopping to help people. And my my wife in the car, she's like, babe, don't do that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I'm trying to help people. Yeah. She's like, you, she ain't telling me not to help people, but she was like, there's strange people out here. You shouldn't be pulling up on them, trying to help them. Then I got back in the house. I was watching the news and they was like, yeah, don't help strange people. I'm like you're right Good luck. Was like, Cause that's what they was doing They was acting like They need help And then they was Fucking motherfuckers up mm. <laughs> right? That's, that's crazy. the most evil shit I ever heard in my life Damn I never that's evil 3.5 like this To myself man You mm. say you never do I never did Oh nice right. Ah Should have rolled have. A fucking cannon What's up, guys? Taking a moment to talk about one of our brand new sponsors, and this is Board Hash. And like I said last time, I'm super stoked about these products because Board Hash is actually the facility that they get manufactured. My homie runs that spot. One of my close friends, and he's been telling me about this brand for months, and then I finally saw him and tried them, and now they're a sponsor. This one right here is GMO, and inside this box, it explains fully what live resin is. So when you get these at the store, you can actually see every single thing about it. So these right here are their pods. These are the little pods right here, the pen. So if you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow Board Hash and let them know the Dope As Usual podcast sent you. So there we go. All three pens. Also, you guys know from the last time we talked about Board Hash, they have edibles and these are Board Hash edibles. So in these, there's grape, strawberry, orange, lemon, and blue raspberry, 100 milligrams for the entire bag, 10 milligrams a piece. So thank you so much for supporting the brands that support us. Thank you to Board Hash. Have a dope ass day. <laughs> it tastes fucking awesome. What's up, guys? Just taking a break to talk about one of our longtime sponsors, and this is Manscaped. Before we even get started, let me give you this information to take advantage of this deal right now. Right now, if you go to manscaped.com forward slash Yola or you call Yola at checkout, you're going to get 20% off of everything and anything you buy, plus free shipping. And they have the perfect package 4.0 luxury and grooming kit. The perfect package is a play on dick joke. Manscaped is right on point. But also, they are the leading company on earth for male grooming and male grooming kits. 8 million customers and 16 million balls cannot be wrong when it comes to 
Manscaped. Lawnmower 4.0. You already know it's skin safe, uh, wireless chargeable, has a light on it, it's waterproof. That comes in the Perfect Package 4.0 along with Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Disposable Shaving Mats or the Magic Mat. Plus two free gifts is the Travel Bag and the Boxers. This all comes in the Perfect Package 4.0. Go ahead and go to manscaped.com right now, forward slash YOLA, or like I said, use code YOLA at checkout. Get anything or everything I just said for 20% off and free shipping. Thank you guys so much for supporting the companies that support us. Back to this ridiculous episode. You normally fuck with joints? Uh, no, I roll Dutchess. Everybody know me. My fans know I roll skinny blunts. They be fucking with me like, yo, Ben. <laughs> oh, for real? Oh, so this is a way right, different story. This is story. like 10 of my shits. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, I'm smoking. You I'm roll those, with meme, you those meme blunts. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. What about Real edibles, shit. dabs, mushrooms? Definitely shrooms. Yep. I get it. I, I, get, I fuck with the shrooms and just chill out. Definitely shrooms. Do you go hard, though? Some shit. Do you take a like, lot? Do you go hard though? Do you take a lot though? Like to, to, enough to everybody get the fuck out of here? Nah, 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 nah. I'm trying to lose reality. <laughs> I want to make sure I take all my watch off, put it away, because I'm gonna wake up without my shit on. Not that much. Not that much. Okay. So enough to hang out and be social. Can you record on shrooms? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So is that part of the routine? Nah, nah, that's not part of the routine. It couldn't be. That's, that's not, not sustainable, bro. Right. Right. That's not part You'd of the routine. You'd be a. You, you start making music like your shirt. You start making Pink Floyd <laughs> shit, fucking going Little crazy shit. long ass words of science. So, Wait. so what I'm from from what I hear is I'm like well, I'm not. I, I thought I was on a different level because there's people who don't fuck with shrooms. I'm like, no, you yeah. should try them. Oh yeah, it's fun, yeah, yeah. but it's like I know it is another level too. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah, there's some nerds out there. <laughs> yeah, <for laughs> no, nah, hell no. Nah. There's some fools like you ever fuck with this this stream? Like get the fuck away from me. You got fucking open toed shoes on. Get away from me. Like I'll be at festivals uh-huh. and there's fools just. Big beards, like you want some DMT? Like no, nah, I do a lot of weed videos. Like mm-hmm. yeah, we have the biggest weed channel on YouTube, basically on Fire. the on the other side. That's how we do all the we all the warehouse and all the clothes and shit. Mm-hmm. So the fools, like I have a lot of fans everywhere I go and shit. Mm-hmm. Right, so, right, right. Yo, what's up? You want? I had people offer me some all shit. Kind of shit. Yep, because they see you smoke these type yeah. of blunts. <laughs> they hear you talking about this shit. I talk about psychedelics. <laughs> right, I like so it. when like, they see you. Well, they like, oh, you ain't seen shit yet. DMT <laughs> vape pens. You seen that? Uh-uh. You want to? I would be so pissed if my don't ever hand me. I'll hate you forever, because people, Ooh, people give me shit you. and they don't tell me. I'll be pissed. There's DMT vape pens. Looks like a regular vape pen, mm. and you're not even on the planet in 30 seconds. I'd be That's fucking crazy. pissed. That's crazy. <laughs> I fuck with the shrooms though, but I know it's another level, mm. man. My no. boy Tony, I got my boy Tony De Niro off the shrooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, he was fucked nice. up. You get he the gummies or the up. chocolates or just straight chocolates or yeah. the gummies. And Those I like the straight shrooms too. Straight mm-hmm. shrooms uh, rolled in fruit roll up. A word. Because once you bite it, the fruit roll up kind of holds it and you never taste the shrooms. Okay, I get it. Because I eat a lot, so I ha- I don't, don't want to taste all that <laughs> shit. <laughs> dried shrooms, like five, right. six grams of dried shrooms is like oh, an exercise. You said that one right. time? Not not all the time, but when okay. I do, I do. I uh, I'll go hard. Okay. This okay. motherfucker's shrooms don't affect him. Gave him his first shrooms ever. He was like, "So I'm sober watching my it, kid." It took a while to ramp up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Took two and a half grams. See, didn't do nothing to him. Damn, that's how they get you because <laughs> that's what happened the first time I took them. I really didn't feel it. So when I went back in the next you one, went hard. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's how it, I hear people's stories like that. You don't have no stories like that where you went too hard. I can't tell it here. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I remember the first thing I thought was I looked up at the stars. I was like, how have I never seen you before? You've been there this whole time. The stars were like diamonds. Just like now I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a story where, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I probably had too much of this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Real yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. My first time I was 14. I knew they hit because I was walking to get my homie from the park at night. You know, you all have that one spot where like his parents don't give a fuck. Let's get fucked up in the mm-hmm. garage. And then they, I'd walk by a tree and I heard... <laughs> And I looked up and the bitch was growing into the sky. Damn. And I stared at it. And by the time I looked forward, my homies were fucking three, four blocks ahead of me. They're all fucked up too. Mm-hmm. So they weren't looking for me. But I realized I had been staring here for two, two three minutes straight. <laughs> right. Oh, that See, that's the thing. I've night. never seen nothing visually. When you do, you're going to fucking lose your mind. Because it's so, <laughs> no, no, no. It's so, what I do is seven grams. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's a first. I, that is a first. I seven grams and then I go in the dark pitch black Mm -hmm. because you can't see anything so everything you think you see because it's like close your eyes you can imagine it's the same thing because it's black right right so everything you see is like it's vivid there was other people like i flew around my neighborhood it was fucking (laughs) nuts i have a whole long no i looked down i saw my own body in my house 
<laughs> yeah. I could see myself on my bed. My fucking wife's next to me. She's eat, she eats the same amount as mm-hmm. I do, and she was fucked up for six hours next to. She has a whole other experience. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there. I could feel the sweat, and like hour four, I'm like. Where the fuck am I? But in the pitch black, bro, you don't know Damn. what your body's doing. That's what my boy was like. We was looking at a picture. He was like, so that picture is not moving. I'm like, it's not. <laughs> He's like, you mean to tell me you don't see that? Pictures turn like, to no. gifs. They start, yeah. yeah they mm-hmm. start animating. I like, I like the waves, though. Yeah. That's I like what it was. Ground... It was a picture with water. It was a picture with oh, water and waves. That's the waves. what he's telling me. Yeah. Got you. I looks like when the ground turns to waves. That's my shit. Because mm. then you don't even know how to step. Mm-hmm. I love that. I, I don't only know. have like it's one different. good. Maybe yeah, one I ain't get that. Research. I ain't get to that level yet. You will. I get and when you level. do, I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to hear the music. I want to know <laughs> what music it is. Y'all the yeah. first motherfuckers I'm gonna call when All I right. do. Please. It's like y'all like, made a psychedelic. Calling me four in the morning. <laughs> Nine minute face FaceTime of him just. <laughs> yeah. See, what if we just opened up the psychedelic part of your career? Real man, I'm telling you. Get into rock and shit for the next half of your career. Yeah, <laughs> Big Shrooms family, man. BSF. <laughs> Where's the merch? Where's the fucking merch uh, at? I got, I got a question. Yeah, go for it. How did Benny times the Buffalo Bills happen? Because mm. going on the, their fucking website, we got the merch line. We got the official anthem. We got the uh, documentary. The official on anthem? The side. He Real did the shit. mafia anthem on, oh, I didn't. on the fucking Bills shit. Right, him on Shot the, field. the video in the locker room, real shit on the field. <sighs> Bills.com, go get your fucking Benny merch because they the you guys got a fucking there. NFL team in a small small you know town. That's that fucking is? nuts. <laughs> like, you guys are like Pittsburgh, real shit. Right? Isn't that the same but, thing? I think Pittsburgh is a little bit bigger, but yeah, Pittsburgh. These other cool. cities don't have this reputation of being so goddamn hopeless. That's the difference <laughs> about Buffalo. Buffalo's got this perpetual gray cloud that people just know about, kind of like Detroit. But even more like, yeah, damn, like it's like it's like it's the but Super I Bowl. Think, I don't think shit like that affects the people that's that's in the city. You feel what I'm saying? No, it, it does. But what I mean is like it make us stronger. Mm-hmm. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? It don't it don't fuck us up. It make us stronger. It's fucked up people from every city, but it make us stronger. Yeah, you know that's where the our, our TED talk was called uh, "Definition of a Hustler." Mm-hmm. That's where that comes from. We talked about the mentality of what it takes to make it happen. Basically, yeah. it's like, damn, I'm up against the impossible, but I like that. Right, you're gonna fight like the underdog. You know, the underdog yeah. fights dirty. It's gonna take 10, 20 years. I'm signing up for that, but I'm gonna make it though. That's what it takes to. That's how you got to think. For, for longevity too. Yeah, like you exactly. said, when you said with well, Eminem's, that's when you guys got big. Like you're like, dude, it's fucking been 20 years. You've been crushing it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. exactly. It's a different story. And like I said, it's 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 underground, and then now it's just no, it's independent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Slash and those years, getting into the main. I was underground. Yes, those are years I was underground, mm-hmm. and then I grew to independent. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, Buffalo Bills. How did that happen? Oh, Tony De Niro, man, my boy Tony De Niro. He Damn. made the connection. Uh, my guy Ron, uh, the Bills familiar with us. They know what well, he's familiar with us. We know what they do. The, we know they know we do the merch and shit. Uh, what else? Uh, shout out Kim Pagulia. You know what I'm saying? I know she haven't been feeling well, but mm-hmm. I did an interview with her, so. I'm pretty sure, you know what I'm saying, you know, she owns the team with her husband. Mm. To take it from having goddamn FBI cases and shit to being the representative of the Bills to <laughs> Byron Brown declaring fucking Conway the Machine Day in Buffalo, like, you know, what's that feel like? It's insane. The, you know, that's the craziest shit in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean, that's the craziest shit in the world. You know, niggas, it's a whole new life. You know what I mean? So... That's why everybody. That's why everybody around you can't understand it because mm-hmm. they're not in your shoes. But it's, a, it's literally a whole new life when you come from that and you come from the, the street shit. The real, the real in tune with it though. You know what I'm saying? Not glorifying it, nothing, but just drawing spectrum. Just being really in it. You know what I'm saying? Having three felonies, or being through those raids and marrying a girl who who was with me through all of that. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like it's a different life to. to to see this shit and I'm happy for everybody. I'm happy for Conway. I'm happy for West Side Gun. I mean, this shit is nuts. You know what it's I'm crazy. But that's why it, it comes with responsibility too. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. Like you said, guide the next on. generation yeah. or something the good. Next generation. It's going to be uh, people from Buffalo who are going to run further mm-hmm. than I ran. You know well, my, my dad is in the uh, Buffalo Music Hall of Fame. It's one of the songs right here. Oh, Pass it fire. on. Damn, that's dope. Yeah, he passed away. I got to accept his, uh, his uh, induction in the Hall of Fame and shit. Oh, man. You know what? That's why I gotta make it in there. You know what I'm saying I'm a donator. I'm a I'm gonna give a, a a gold plaque to them from Johnny P's caddy. Mm. That's oh, what I, that's shit. a must. That's yeah, what that's I said. Already, I said I gotta give one of these to the museum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's See, the story. just to solidify, like I'm from a small town. We had an artist on here. His name is GB uh, Ghetto Boy. He's a Mexican artist, fucking dope. He's from my town. He just got a. He does so much. Get he used to be. I grew up in the fucking ghetto. He's the motherfuckers I would avoid. Cause I'm like, I ain't trying to get shot. I don't want to hang out. I'm selling weed. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. But now he's kind of like cleans up a park. The park I used to fucking chill at where all the gangbangers were. And I knew just play football over there and don't talk to them. Right, right. You right. know what I'm saying? He just got the award from the a city for humanitarian or some crazy shit. I know you're like, how the fuck that happened? It, no, it's I like I love it. Being from the kid that used to wear the mask running around shooting motherfuckers to, hey, you regret accepting an award in the suit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you guys are doing your thing and you're obviously your own merch, but it is wild that an NFL team is partnering with you guys. Yeah. And you guys are from the fucking city. And I know you're right. you're back when you, you were doing your shit, chopping shit, whatever. You would never imagine. I'm going to be on the field. Yeah, doing my, doing my music. No, hell no. Hell no, know, man. Definitely. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Man. We know we're real Bills fans. You know what I'm saying? We're real Bills fans, man. We We... Before all of this shit, you, you know, remember be, each of the four be, Super Bowls as a child. Exactly. It was traumatic. I, re I remember that. Even before they were good, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We was riding with them. So to be a part of this is a blessing. To represent the side of the city, I do. You know what I mean, you know, real noble, real noble gangster Robin Hood shit, man. For the people, mm -hmm. for the people, man. What do you make of Josh Allen right now? And I love Josh. You just got to get settled. The, the Bills never been a, a first half team, a, a, a beginning of the season team. Since we got Josh, you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. he always he always got to get a game or two to figure it out. So I love Josh, man. Mm -hmm. Everybody from Buffalo is a fucking fan. You yeah. just broke it down. He his wife no. So he's got to sit back in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, everybody from Buffalo is a diehard commentator yeah. and shit. No, yeah. you guys really know your shit. It's a football town, like you said. There's nothing but drinking, breaking fucking tables, going to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like there's not. Yeah. I, I get it. You guys are just. It's yeah, exciting, blue, blue collar though, town, definitely. Because I just saw today they posted they're having the raffle for people to be able to start like, I don't know what stage of opening the fucking weed stores it is, but mm -hmm. some big important stage of being out. that. I experienced that out when I first moved out here ten years ago. How it rolled out in Orange County, and I'm just so excited for Buffalo because it's about yeah. to do the same shit. Right. And you know, do you have any plans on like being at the forefront of that for the town? It's it's, it's funny you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Man, basically, uh, we just closed on a farm. You know what I'm saying? Like a big ass farm. I was wondering what that was about. Out there? You know yes, yes, in upstate New York. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> me, me and my guys. You know what I'm saying? An investment group. Uh, I'm telling you, we gonna we when we when when everything is done and finalized because it's a big it's a, it's, it's it takes forever. Exactly, and it's something huge going on. So as soon as it uh, finalizes, man, we gonna run around. We are gonna talk about it. And it's gonna be crazy, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be like, definitely gonna be the biggest shit in upstate New York, mm. definitely. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna have like multiple locations. It's gonna be, it's gonna be different things, mm -hmm. like from top to bottom, from growing a product to, to, to packaging it to, to, to being in stores where you can do everything right. It, even if people got their own businesses there, they can just deal with us. They wouldn't mm -hmm. have to, you know what I'm saying? We, it's gonna yeah. be a bunch of shit going on. So much opportunity right now. It's exciting. <laughs> I know you yeah. know what you're getting into, mm -hmm. but that, that's like a. Four generational wealth type of thing. Exactly, exactly. That's different. That's the reason. That's the reason of it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck. That's the reason of it, man. And it's, yeah, like, it's you know, big. You know what's crazy? It's just like I was. I was on my way home, right from from New York City. I was on my way home to Buffalo. I pulled up. I was at the hotel, and I seen like these rich dudes coming out the restaurant at the hotel, and they was going upstairs. I I couldn't tell they were going upstairs to the rooftop. It was a rooftop party at the top of the hotel. I was gonna end up going there too, but I was just had to go freshen up and shit. So uh, uh, they recognized who I was, so we chopped it for a second, and then it was like, take some pics. I'm like, I'm gonna come change my shit, and I'm gonna get up there. I just drove six hours from New York City. And then I went up there, and I was just chopping it up with them. And I'm saying, and they offered me a percentage of the company. And they come and they buying it, and. That's how this worked? That's how this worked? Work. I, I, I didn't have to put in a dollar, I didn't have to do nothing. And shout out to, uh, my boy Jimmy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out my boy Jay, shout out Serge and everybody else. But gave me a percentage of that shit and keep me posted on everything from closing, from uh, helping find buildings, to everything, man. So just Similar being to in the right Thomas place did. at the right time, man. Yeah, I'm, said, I, I just generation, the exact same thing. You said generational wealth type of shit and just want to humbug like that. Just all for me. Nah. It's crazy. It's like 
not even my passion. It's just it's just an actual business. Mm-hmm. I love fucking weed, but I'm not growing it. Yeah, man. I ain't got the time for that. James Johnson used to play for the Heat, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out him, man. That's who you're investing with, though? Mm-hmm. And some other guys, too. And some other guys, too. Mm-hmm. But definitely, though. So that just, that's just a crazy story right there. <laughs> I mean, just out of nowhere, just met those guys, man. These dudes as rich as fuck in Buffalo. I seen them like, what these, what's these dudes doing in Buffalo? Oh, and one of those. Yep, and it was like, come kick it with us upstairs. Because you don't see it. nice cars. Like, at least when I lived there, I had never seen a Bentley. I had never seen a Rolls right, Royce right, right. or, you know. Like a regular Benz is a nice car. A fucking Tesla's a nice car. If it, mm-hmm. You know, like... Real shit. So if somebody's like in some expensive shit, they fucking stand out. <laughs> For real shit. That's why I was riding around in that motherfucker in my drop. I had a drop top been in Buffalo riding around for about a month in that bitch. A drop top in the in the cold? It wasn't cold. <laughs> uh, sorry, I have no idea about how cold it is over there. You get three or four months. <laughs> All right, man, I don't know. I don't know. It, it yeah. was the summertime. All right. Uh, so it's, it gets warm. I get you. It might get 90 sometimes at that bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Everything I ever see is like, damn, it looks fucking frozen over there. Right, right, right. That's a fact. But it get it get, it get nice out there, too. It get, it get hot out that bitch, too. You know what I'm saying? So You got any plans on moving or are you going to? I live in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah, I still got oh, a, okay. a apartment oh, got in Buffalo, you, I but you. I live in Atlanta. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Is that for music, for work? Is that why you're out there? It's for music, work, and it's for family. But it's for family first, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, dude, the, yeah, the houses yeah. out there for the prices make me want to leave California forever. Yeah, definitely. I used to go to school down there. I used to live down there in the 90s. In Atlanta? Yeah, so my family been living down there. Oh, no first shit. Like, what, what grade were you, what grades you out there? I was in eighth grade. Just eighth, eighth grade? grade? Yep, just eighth grade. And Did you get kicked out and have to go out there? Is that why? No, I, 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 when I got shit. kicked out of school, I had to go back to Buffalo. That's what happened. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. See, I got kicked you know out. I went to Oregon. <laughs> oh, Same shit. But I lost all my people I sold weed to because <laughs> like, people smoke weed every day. <laughs> right. If you don't answer one fucking time, it's you might, it might be over. It's over. So it's that's over. why selling weed is great. But it's also like, don't miss your phone call. Like, you don't go out of town. Christmas, you better be fucking ready mm-hmm. to sell some weed. That's why the trap niggas can't leave. Can't go nowhere. They can't go nowhere. Can't trap go niggas ain't never went nowhere. Getting rich as a bitch ain't <laughs> yep. never left can't the city. Can't go nowhere. Ain't never buy left the city. same food because you can't fucking <laughs> right, right. leave nowhere. Real shit. I feel you, dude. I go to Santa Cruz, buy CDs, and come back because I got to be back. Mm-hmm. I stash 20s and 10s on certain parts of my house outside and the mm-hmm. couch in the back. And nobody ever fucking burned me, dude. I did, did shit like years. that too. I did that shit like that too. Drink pipes. Yeah. I, I did shit like that too when I had to leave one time. Not not go out of town when I had to leave for a couple hours. I was trapping in the trap. I stashed 20s and I stashed 40s yep. and I stashed grams. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew people was going to be calling me. So I'm like, yo, huh, pull up. Leave the I, money in I the mailbox. Make, I would make them bring me the money first though. Mm-hmm. Oh, you are strict. You can't, I, you leave can't, it in the mailbox, bro. You can't trust dope fiends. You know See, I sell the weed. Okay, yeah, you, 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 weed. You can't trust dope <laughs> you fiends can't, like you can't. that. But also, so. it's like take one forty sack, motherfucker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Leave the rest. That's even sketchy nah, too. Real shit. That's a fact. I love this. I yeah, used see, to make them bring me the money. I used to make them bring me the money. Now tell them where the dope was at. For real. Oh, that's damn. Crazy. That's some, that's some real mm-hmm. drugs dealer shit, bro. Nah, nah. <laughs> I just like you know my house where we smoke weed at. I got All burnt right. before though. I still got burnt before trying to be nice mm-hmm. and then didn't, didn't make them bring me the money. Oh yeah, they're not coming. I never. It was for forty rock. Yeah. Once mm-hmm. it's open, it's over. For forty. Man. I was heard about that. Matter of fact, it was for two forties, eighty. Ugh. Yeah, you know that was fucked up. Every dollar hurt back then. Every dollar hurt back then. Hell yeah. It's it's it's. It, does, it, does it kind of make you smile though? Now sometimes you're like fifteen dollar water bottle. Fuck. Real it's shit. okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because no, you just. Fact. It's different. I know. I used to used to be fucked up. Used to be poor, and I used to, and I. You know what? You know what? Coming from that type of life is so. That's why you. That's why you gotta. You gotta grind it and get to see a different level with this shit. So you know, you were being petty back then. You was thinking small back then. Yeah. So it's good to reach the other level. So you, so you could tell yourself, like, what the fuck was I doing? We say it every fucking what were we doing back what then? What the fuck was I doing? Dude, you know I, I fucking feel you completely. I used to stress about I'm paying for how much on this? Like, bro, that is a fucking haircut. What are you stressing on? But back when you were selling sags and reading up on QPs and halves, and then then I got into packs. Like you said, every fucking dollar really meant something. Mm-hmm. My rent was only six hundred and I was yeah. still like all right, I gotta hurry up and get that shit. Hell yeah, you know that. So like when you when you reing up or you in the hood, you a, you a trap nigga. You buying a a four and a half or you buying a nine. Every few hundred dollars count. Every few hundred dollars count. Of course, you know what I'm saying so. On the way to that few hundred dollars, it's like an eighty piece gone. You know, <sighs> like, yeah, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So hell yeah, I remember that life like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you waking up in the morning, bagging up bundles. 
with a mask on, sometimes without a mask on. Fentanyl when nobody knew knew about that shit. You know what I'm saying? And 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 then even think about this shit just reminding me right now, like what the fuck was I doing? Yeah. Nigga, I was thirty years old, three time felon, selling dope hand to hand. Oh. Damn. Selling dope hand to hand. That's crazy. It's insane. I might as well have been playing in a fucking highway. Yeah. What was going through your mind? Were you desperate? Were you hard headed? Were you not Buddy. didn't care? Just no other option? I'm gonna be honest with you. What what was going through my mind was this is this is what I always done. You know what I'm saying? So to be honest with you, I already accepted the consequence Ugh. of whatever happened. Okay. And that and, and just saying that just reminds me like what the fuck was <laughs> I doing? But I really accepted the consequence. I really woke up, looked at my girl every day, thinking like I might have to leave this bitch. Ugh. I'm saying it's yeah. like shit gonna get ugly. Uh -huh. I'm saying it. How in love we were at that time, thinking like, man, this, you know what I'm saying? Just looking at my daughter, even picking her up from school. Like this real shit, looking in her face. You had but already these are, But that. these are, I'm just being honest with you. This is not like, this is not like every, 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 every nigga know who, 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 had, who playing that game at that level know. And I'm not the only one. So niggas watching is gonna know. It's not nothing that's harping on my brain all day, every day. Mm -hmm. These is like quick thoughts yeah. I'm having. Yeah. Throughout my day, as you leave the house, always as I'm doing some yeah. shit, or you know what I'm saying, as I'm just like, yo, I'll be right back, but I know what I'm going to go do. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Knowing what what might be on the under in at that door, that phone call. You understand? So it wasn't like nothing. And then I think about that, then I think about like, I'm about to get this money. Mm -hmm. you know always saying? overtook it though. You know, just just what we did because we had better we had better opportunities, but. To me, and I can't speak for nobody else. I feel like I had better opportunities, but they weren't they weren't right in front of me. You know what I'm saying? I went what was right in front of me. I'm from a block where everybody did that. Well, I know a lot of people are gonna say that, but like my in my city, my block was known for that at the time. You know what I'm saying? It was it was known for that. It was like where people came from the different parts of the city to come to my block for, you know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> Even though I might have, I might not have been involved in it at that point in time, but I, it, it was Immersed the culture. In it. it was the culture of my neighborhood, yeah. so it was in my blood to want to be a trap or to want to, you know, it's some dumb like shit. Graduating to shit. Now I mean, I'm not gonna say it's dumb shit, but I'm gonna just say it's like the, the mindset is dumb shit, not the culture or the hood, because it gave me a sense of something to be proud about. Anything that gives you something to be proud about. That's dope. Give you confidence. A young black kid from the hood, and I was proud to be from my neighborhood because it stood for something. But anyway, I don't think it's dumb shit. I just think that you know, we don't exercise our options, man, when we come from the ghetto. We don't, we don't exercise our options. That's why you got a bunch of motherfuckers trying to teach niggas real estate because they like it's other shit to do than dope dealing and rapping and playing ball, nigga. You see them niggas getting rich off real estate? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so much other things to do, but you know, everybody want to be cool. Everybody want to be in the streets because that's the easiest thing to do. When you grow up from the hood, when you in the hood, it's two things that you're going to get your respect off when you first come up. And that's dope dealing, not dope dealing, getting money or swinging that gun. But those are the easiest things. Swinging a gun is easier than getting the money. So that's why that's the... That's why everybody doing it, cause it's easier to get the money. I mean, cause it's harder to get the money. So other dudes get the money, but you know, you know this shit wicked. You know what I'm saying, but for me, in my head, that's what was going through in my head at time at those times. But I can't believe I was doing that shit, man. I can't believe that shit. I got homies doing time, 22 years, life, 11 Ugh. years. What was? How deep were you in music at that point? I was I was the hottest shit. I was I was mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. I already was a legend in the city. Mm -hmm. Damn, still doing heavy recording call. all the Fuck. time oh. in the studio all the time. I was still doing. I was still doing a BSF business. You know what I'm saying? Black Soprano family. It was people coming to tell it. It was people coming t to me ten years ago, telling me to stop wearing BSF shirts because it's hot. The feds looking at you. Yeah. It was people like calling my phone, having private conversations, or people reaching out to other people, telling me that like. I'm saying like, yo, let me holler at you, yo, such and such said that, da 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 they on you, da 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 I mean, it was shit like that going on. When I was 30 years old, going hand in hand with this shit, yeah. rapping and doing shit. <laughs> Nigga, I got a video, <laughs> I got a video that I took down 
And yeah, if people <laughs> gonna go watch down. this shit. I've been trying to get this shit taken down off YouTube. <laughs> it's called My Stove. Please turn up My Stove. And and that's on Seneca. And the house is on Seneca. And we in there doing the most. I got India in there, my wife now, and she in there dancing. She got the booty shorts on and all type of shit. We are wilding in that motherfucker. <laughs> we acting like we cooking dope in a pot, but we was in a real spot where we was doing business out of. Shot that video amongst all of that going on. Yeah. Crazy. You're fucking, you're <laughs> risking that shit. <laughs> nah, when you, when you make the move, the video about that, yeah. you're going to look back and go, what the fuck was I thinking? I think the same shit though, like, you're really not making that much money, but driving fifty packs. Mm. But you're risking a lot. Man, I got some crazy. I got some crazy stories, man, about that. About that shit, man. I wonder, like, I have I, honestly, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done this shit in at least ten years. A long time. But I want to be able to tell these stories, man. Outside mm. of rap, it's crazy shit, man. Just to let you know, like, where the mm. fuck a motherfucker mind was at. But if you apply that dumb shit. To this, you would be the best hustler ever in the world. Mm -hmm. If you apply that negative, you know what I'm saying, to this shit, you'll be the best hustler in the world. I just like, because when people ask me the same shit you did, it was how much, 10 years? And you went, because you remember, you remembered exactly the date and shit. <laughs> people always ask me, I go, 11 years ago. Because mm -hmm. it's always something you got to remember, like this is on camera, you better shut the fuck up. That's why I don't even talk about certain things. Mm -hmm. Not real shit. Like cause, cause you never know what these people, these 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 authorities, these law enforcement authorities is out here. They 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 gun ho. They want to use the lyrics. They want to use the lifestyles. Oh, for sure. They want to they want to they want to go for easy targets. Uh, you know what I mean? They want to go for the low hanging fruit for a rapper, somebody like that who who might be riding around with a gun to protect themselves, who might be involved in <clears throat> public. Beefs and shit like that So you know They latch on through shit like that So you gotta be careful man You know what I'm saying Is it bad Like I know when I lived in Buffalo The cops are up in your fucking life Like way nah, differently it's, it's not bad It's not bad I was uh It's not bad for me man They, they You know what I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you It's 50-50 They do be on my ass Back home in <laughs> Buffalo They do they, they you had to really think ass. about that one, huh? Because I didn't want to. Because I didn't want to. You know what I mean? Because I thought about the good shit first. I <laughs> well, that's good though. You know that's what? a different mentality. And then now, I thought though. about the other shit. Now they do be on my ass. It's like you notice that I never perform. Like it's a it's a it's a club there that I never performed in because Conway performed there, Westside Gun performed there, and I performed there with them. And I'd have had sold out shows in other parts of the city, but not there because they don't let me book there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why. Maybe they had their reasons why. You know what I mean? Huh. But it's, it's a lot of shit like that that go on with me. You know what I'm saying? That they be on certain shit with me in Buffalo. But it's other good shit too. They put me over the other day, they, a couple months ago, and they uh they searched my car, they put me in the back and everything, and then he told me I had a warrant. But I'm like, I don't got no fucking warrant, man. I know I don't. I kind of like blacked out on him, and then he was like, y'all didn't say I was, was it gonna take you. And I'm thinking like, damn, since when y'all don't take people for warrants? Because Buffalo police taking you if you got a warrant. But shit ain't take me, so he looked out for me. So I respect that. And then about, I took care of it. I flew out here from, I flew, I flew out here and landed in Buffalo. I took a red eye, landed off the plane, jumped in my whip, and then went right to court. Mm. And took care of it. Uh, about a week later. And then about another two weeks later, I'm just, I'm just kicking it. Just out, I'm out kicking it in Buffalo, so... This guy, he like, yo, I fuck with your music. I like your shit. He had a suit on and shit. I'm like, oh, appreciate you. I'm in this love. He was like, man, you got a warrant. I'm a, a Buffalo police officer. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Real shit. That's some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some blow Johnny Depp bullshit right there. Let's go to the bathroom and come back and your knife's gone. What the fuck was that? Yo, I'm a big fan. Get in the fucking car. No, he didn't take me. He didn't, he didn't take me. He was just, we was at a party. We was out at a club. Yeah. He 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 was in plain clothes and he just let me know like that's what I do. You got a warrant, you might want to get that taken care of. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I went last week. Mm -hmm. Just took care of. We got to update update your shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant this is some for something else. Nah, I, I, was, no. I thought it was the most petty shit I ever fucking heard of. Nah, fuck no. I don't be I don't be into shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't be into shit. Yo, and one time I I met this there's one cop too up there because I'm telling you because when they see me and they be in their plain clothes they say shit to me because they. Honestly, a lot of them are fans of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And I am Benny the fucking butcher, so mm -hmm. it, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not mad at it. I love it. But this is what he said to me. He was like, "Yo, 
he was like, what the fuck he say to me? He was like, man, it's good that you got everything you're going on, man. You need, you should just switch everything legit. And I'm like, what? That's what I did do. Real shit. That's crazy, right? <laughs> What's he confused about? I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? And I'm like, I'm like, yo, that's crazy. That's some, that's some crazy shit to say. It's like, I don't know what they be talking about down there. He's just basically on Tana Talk 2 still. Yeah. And he's like, damn, this shit just <laughs> dropped. This motherfucker's wild. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they got going on down there. That's funny. They obviously don't got YouTube, yeah. Apple Music, or I don't know, the Instagram. I don't know what they don't got. But shit. Yeah, no. Love, Things are different now. All this makes the whole Bills deal, all this shit with the fucking Byron Brown even more relevant and more just, you guys crossed over. It's Yeah, 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 man. And, 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 and Marty's constantly, constantly just talking about you guys do a man, shit Man, we Buffalo, appreciate bro. Marty, man. He's he holding it down, too. It's He's it's a Buffalo dope, representative. Yeah, we're doing big things for Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we appreciate that, too, man. One thing about Buffalo people, we're going to chew. We're going to eat no matter what. For we're going to chew. So shout out to the city, everything, man. We love y'all. One last fun fact. You know who David Goggins is? Mm -mm. Oh. Toughest man on earth. Uh, he went on Rogan and became super famous. He's like... Uh, Navy SEAL, all mm -hmm. that type of the shit. The first black Navy SEAL, right? But he's like a uh, ultra marathon runner, all this super mm -hmm. high endurance Guinness World Record shit. But you know Skateland? Yeah. <laughs> His family owns it. He grew up oh, that's crazy. cleaning the floors and shit. That's crazy. And a Walden. Yeah. Right. And he became, or uh, Delavan or some shit. Delavan? Ferry. Ferry. Yeah. Oh, Ferry, the one on Ferry. Yeah. The, it okay. was like it was famous in the seventh and like Rick James, OJ right, right, right. and everybody. It was famous when we was growing up in the nineties too, man. Mm. We went to that shit crazy. But yeah, but yeah, he's like he's another one out of Buffalo. It's mm. super insane. Lex Luger. Mm. What do you mean? Lex Luger. Out of Buffalo? You ain't know that? No. Lex Luger. The producer? Nah. The, the wrestler? wrestler? Oh ah! shit. <laughs> Right, right. You know that, Reg. <laughs> right, Lex Luger. You know what I'm saying? That's a good one. Oh, Definitely. Shit. <laughs> I just saw the toy in my head. The little, the, the rubber ones. Yeah, that yeah people fold don't back. know that. Lex See, Luger. I didn't, I wasn't on wrestling. I went back to like Waka Flocka beats and shit in my head. And you said Lex Luger. <laughs> you like the fucking producer. They got no, you not. No, no David know. Goggins is the toughest man on earth. He has the pull up. Most pull-ups in 19 hours, world record. Damn, he one of them niggas. Uh, What's his name again? David Goggins. David Goggins. He is the, he's a, he's a machine, bro. Okay. If you need something to listen to, his books are awesome. He talks about crazy ass stories. I'm not a bad right, Watch how I put them together. Where okay. can they find your, uh, like your music, your current music? Uh, you already know. Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. Go to Tidal, find my shit. Y'all know what it is, man. YouTube, anywhere you at, Amazon, but go to Tidal. And it's Get Benny on Instagram, right? Get Benny on Instagram, uh... It's Get Benny on Twitter. It's Benny the Butcher in real life. Jeremy Pinnock is my government name. You could Google it. You know what I'm so, saying? Call me what you want to call me, baby. Let's go. We appreciate you, man. Uh, this is this is it. Uh, we're fucking hyped. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm fucking hyped. You smoked that whole joint. No one ever yeah. fucking smokes the whole joint. They when up it high. and then leave it there for the whole fucking show. <laughs> I promise you. I'm smoking. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for being man, here. Appreciate y'all. It was a pleasure, man. Appreciate yes, you. Sir. I know uh, our fans are hyped. Guys, this has been the Benny the Butcher episode. This is Marty. I'm Bill ah, Jola. Have a go, best Big day. Yeah. I'm actually fucking high shit. off that joint.